might actually be the most derivative one of all. I mean, Christ, the same house. Maybe so. But you forgot the first rule of surviving a stab movie. Never answer the- I'm bored. Wait! Welcome back to Horror Queers. It's a mini-sode. Bonus mini-sode. Hereditary's mini-sode. And I'm Joe. And I'm Trace. And yes, we are doing the 2022 Hereditary, celebrating all things horror from last year to kick the Oscars in the ass. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so folks, we recognize that many people don't know what this is because we typically release this only on Patreon, but a friend of the show, Megan Navarro, who of course writes for Bloody, she actually encouraged me when she saw it. She was like, well, why do you want people to care if you don't tell them who <laughs> wins? So uh, yeah, we decided this year we're going to release it publicly. So if you don't know what the hereditaries are, This is our version of the horror Oscars. We started it four years ago when Toni Collette did not get nominated for her role in Hereditary. And every year since, we've recognized horror and TV in a number of different categories. This year, our patrons got to help us create the shortlist. And then we opened up the voting to everybody. And uh, yeah, this is the results. And if you're like, wait, I didn't get to vote. I wanted to vote. That is where social media comes into play. So every uh, like holiday season, be sure you're following our socials because we post this ballot everywhere. And you are you. it's, it's really the People's Choice Awards for horror. So not the Oscars, mm-hmm. but that's fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's true. Like we we basically help to curate some of the titles. Uh, we try to make sure a couple of our favorites make the list. But overall, yeah, this is publicly voted on and it's the people's will. So if you want to vote, yeah, keep an eye out every December. But fuck it, Joe. I mean, like, l- let's just jump into this, right? I mean, no, like, let's do it because that's what the people want to hear. So we're going to kick things off with best horror TV. So Trace, what are our nominees for this year? Oh, man. And this is the one that I am unfortunately the least knowledgeable in because I missed a lot of TV this year. But mm-hmm. best horror TV. The nominees are Cabinet of Curiosities on Netflix, Servant Season 3 on Apple TV+, Plus, Chucky Season 2 on Sci-Fi, Evil Season 3 on CBS or slash Paramount+, Plus. <laughs> mm. Interview with the Vampire on AMC, which that's my biggest uh, blind spot of the year that I need to catch up on, Wednesday on Netflix. Yellow Jacket Season 1 on Showtime, All of Us Are Dead on Netflix, The Baby on HBO, and What We Do in the Shadows on FX. So, Joe, per tradition, Mm -hmm. who do you think should win this award? And second, who do you think will win this award? Okay, so this one's a bit of a tough one. I'm going to go with Yellow Jacket Season 1 because I think it's the most groundbreaking of this list. I will confess, I also have not seen Interview with the Vampire or All of Us Are Dead. Uh, but yeah, Yellow Jacket stood out for me. And Trace, who do you think should win? I have Yellow Jackets for should win as well. But for my will win, I think mm-hmm. that Chucky has earned so much goodwill that we are going to see a win for Chucky this time. Yeah, that's also who I put will win. So let's find out who takes the crown. All right. And shockingly enough, we are correct. It is Yellow Jacket season one with 30.9% of the vote. Followed Whoa. by Chucky with 21.5, and runner-up was Cabinet of Curiosities with 14.5. Interesting. Well, all I have to say to that is, everyone, y'all should be watching Servant, and you should be watching Evil. <laughs> Correct, yeah. Uh, we got a lot of responses from people who did participate in the voting that this year's ballots overall was very, very difficult. I saw that a lot because, I mean, 2022 was a banner year for the genre, everyone, and may it continue into 2023. Indeed, indeed. Okay, so what's our next category? Yes, we are going to move on to Best Ensemble in a Horror Film of This Year. Much smaller nominations list, though, so take us away. Okay, so we have Scream, X, Bodies, 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 Nope, and Glass Onion. So, okay. For should win, I oh this this was tough for me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say bodies, bodies, bodies should win for best ensemble. 
Okay, and I think the same thing, so I'm oh. in alignment. Now, who do you think will win this? So this is tricky. I ended up going with Glass Onion because it has the most famous ensemble, but I also recognize that a lot of people couldn't watch the actual movie until late in the voting process. So I could be risking it all. I'm saying Scream is going to win this one. Well, I don't think that this film was as beloved as some of the previous entries. I do think that it's found a pretty strong fan base for for this film specifically. So I I I think this might clinch the win, but we'll see. Okay, so the winner is neither of those. The winner is, in fact, X with 26.4%. But we should note that the two runners up are very close. Second place is Nope with 22.2, followed by Scream with 20.6. Okay, so both of us have a point. We're one for two. Okay. All right. So next up, everyone, we have best breakout performance. And good Lord, this was a hard one for me. So, (laughs) yeah, uh, fun fact, this is one of the new categories for this year. We added this because we condensed our acting into non-gender specific uh, categories. So we wanted to make sure that we were still acknowledging someone who had made a big splash in a kind of debut fashion. Yes. So our nominees are... Hannah Rose Liu for No Exit, Skylar Davenport for See For Me, Amber Midthunder for Prey, Madeline McGraw for The Black Phone, Sozie Bacon for Smile, Anna Cobb for We're All Going to the World's Fair, Lauren Lavera for Terrifier 2, Brandon Perea for Nope, Jasmine Savoy Brown for Scream, and Georgina Campbell for Barbarian. And, um, God... Joe, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> who do you think should win this one? <laughs> yeah, this is an embarrassment of riches. Like all of these people, hopefully we will be talking about for decades to come in the genre. I ended up going with Sozie Bacon for Smile because I think she had the hardest role to pull off out of all of these. With a, a shout out to Madeline McGraw for being a very young actor who is doing exceptionally good work. Interesting. So for me, I think that Amber Midthunder should win this for Prey. Oh, um, okay. I feel like, I mean, like Prey did really well when it came out. And it's mm-hmm. like, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about it since then. But that, that's a performance that still really stuck with me throughout the end of the year. Okay. And do you think she will win? So I don't. I actually think, and maybe this is going to be controversial, I think that Lauren Levera is going to win for Terrifier 2 because I have seen the fan base, like, swarm around her in the past couple months. Okay, interesting. And I think that it's going to be Jasmine Savoy Brown for Scream because not only was she the most popular character who was introduced in the new film, but also she's had a fucking great year overall. I was like, she was in Yellow Jackets, too, so we could have included yeah. that on her breakout performance. Well, that's why she is on another nomination later on. <laughs> well, okay, so who did win? Are either one of us right? We are both wrong, but if you had gone with your gut, you would have won this because it is Amber Midthunder for Prey with 23.9% of the vote. All right, go me. Okay, yay. I, but I don't get a point for you that. You don't get a point for that. It, Fuck so. you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in case you were wondering, this was also another tight category. Second place was Georgina Campbell for Barbarian at 19. Then Laura Lavera for Terrifier 2 at 12.7. Mm. And Madeline McGraw in... Fourth place at twelve point six. This was a tough one, y'all. And I feel bad for Skylar Davenport and Hannah Rose Lou because I feel like no exit and C for me were like two of the lesser known films because yeah. they came out in January of last year. But if you haven't seen those films, everyone, go watch them because those performances are worth checking out. Yeah, and I'll say uh Anna Cobb for We're All Going to the World's Fair. Great film, tiny film. So probably didn't yes. have a great chance against this kind of competition. But you know what? Part of the awards is that we're also trying to give people titles that they may have missed, and you should go back and check them out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But Joe, next up is Best Supporting Performance. So why don't you walk us through those nominations? 
Okay, so I will say this is the category we got the most feedback from where people yeah. <laughs> basically hurled expletives at us and said this is way too hard to decide. And uh, when I had to pick, I agreed. So uh, nominees are Jenna Ortega for Scream, Brittany Snow for X, Rachel Sennett for Bodies, 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 Julia Stiles for Orphan First Kill, Hong Chow for The Menu, Stephen Ewan for Nope, Kiki Palmer for Nope. We also got feedback that, oh, we should not consider Kiki a supporting performer. That's up for our discussion, not yours. <laughs> Jamie... <laughs> uh, okay. Jamie Clayton for Hellraiser, Rory Kinnear for Men, and Kate Hudson for Glass Onion. So, Trace, who do you think should win for this? <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, if I could give an award to Brittany Snow and Rachel Sennett and Julia Stiles and Hong Chow, they would all get the award. But right. I'm going to say that Rachel Sennett should win this award. Okay. I agree, although I had a tie because I also think that Hong Chow should win for the menu. Yeah, yeah. And everyone, again, she's not going to win, but Julia Stiles, gangbusters performance in Orphan vs. Kill. The willingness to go along with this. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> but, okay, I do think that who is going to win is mm -hmm. horrors like Princess of 2022. I think Jenna Ortega is going to win this award. Okay, interesting. I actually think it will be Senate for Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Okay, well, let's... Well, who is it, Joe? So we are both wrong. It is the one and only Kiki Palmer. So even though people protested Whoa! that she was miscategorized, she still fucking won it with 24% of the vote. That's Whoa. nearly 10% more than Jenna Ortega with 14.5. So she was second place. She was second, followed by Brittany Snow at 12% and then Senate 11.7. <gasps> so this was, this was still relatively tight. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Sinnott deserves such a higher ranking, but you know what? I'm sorry. It's the people's choice, not mine. Um, this is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So we're still one one each, Joe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So next up, we have our award for best lead performance. And, oh, God. Okay. Uh -huh. So the nominees are <laughs> Regina Hall in Master, Aisha D in Sissy, Micah Monroe in Watcher, Zach Villa in Hypochondriac, Rebecca Hall in Resurrection, Ryan Quantin in Glorious, Anna Diop in Nanny, Mia Goth in Pearl, Isabel Fuhrman in Orphan First Kill, and David Howard Thornton in Terrifier 2. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I have Mia Goth should win and will win for Pearl. Okay. I have Zach Villa for Hypochondriac, and I also wanted to give a shout out to Anna Diop because I think she's amazing in a film that was unceremoniously dumped with no fanfare. I don't think yeah. she's going to win, but I just wanted to give her that recognition. This was another just shoot into the barrel. Every single one of these performances is amazing. Yeah. Agreed. I also think Mia Goth will win for Pearl. Um, question. So did, did you see Nanny? Because, yeah, this is the one that I missed. But I have it mm -hmm. in my screeners because I'm just like, I just didn't get around to it. But yeah, th there was no fanfare for this movie, but the reviews were solid for it. Yeah, it it's really good. I would say it's kind of on par with Master for me, maybe a little bit more successful than that. And I recognize I'm making okay. the comparison because they're both like led by a black actress and they didn't really get the push that some of the other streaming horror films did this year. Um, yeah. This one is also very interested in race. It's making a class critique. I didn't love the narrative, but I think Diop is great. All right. That, that's an endorsement enough for me, but okay. Who's the winner of this one? All right, so we both get an extra point because, yes, this was Yay. a runaway win for Mia Goth, 62.8 of the Whoa. vote. Okay, wait, so who was second place? Second place was Isabel Furman with only 8.4, <gasps> though, followed by oh Rebecca God. Hall with uh, <laughs> 8. So, Oh, my God. Well, you know what? It's okay. I, good for you, Isabel Furman. Everyone loves Orphan First Kill except for the wrong people. <laughs> yeah if you don't like that movie you're the enemy of fun 
<laughs> All right. So next up, Joe, we have MVP of 2022. So what are the nominees for that? Yeah, closing out the acting categories. This is a new award that we added this year. So this is somebody who has more than two projects that made a splash. So we've got Jenna Ortega for Scream X Wednesday and Studio 666. So a girl was busy. (laughs) Very. We also have Mia Goth for X and Pearl. Justin Long for Barbarian and House of Darkness. Micah Monroe for Watcher and Significant Other, Jasmine Savoy Brown for Scream and Yellow Jacket Season 1, and rounding out the list, Anya Taylor-Joy for The Northman and The Menu. All right, so who should win this one, Joe? So I'm saying Jenna Ortega will and should. Um, The way I wanted to say Micah Monroe for this, I'm actually sticking mm-hmm. with Mia Goth for should and will. Okay, interesting. That's a point for me Fuck. with thirty <laughs> with thirty nine point one, but Mia Goth second place thirty eight point one. Oh, fuck me in the face! <laughs> <laughs> so literally one percent difference. Clearly, we had two women who were just absolutely killing the game this year, owning the horror genre. And I don't think either one of them is going to slow down because obviously we'll still have Maxine coming out. And well, mm-hmm. shit, Wednesday just got renewed for season two and Scream mm-hmm. Six and Scream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ooh, That's wild. Ooh, the next one's a That's favorite. Wild. I'm so excited. Okay. Next one is for best creature design. All right. Nominees for this. We have Jean Jacket in Nope. The Birthing Thing in Men. Mother <laughs> in Barbarian. Smile Monster. <laughs> Smile Monster in Smile. I mean, they never name it. What do you want me to do? <laughs> no, it, it, it's a Smile Monster. That's what it is. <laughs> Uh, Allie and Hatching, Cenobites in Hellraiser, The Predator in Prey, and The Demons in Deadstream. So, Joe, who should win this one? Okay, so in terms of the ones that stuck with me the most, I ended up going with the birthing sequence, like the creature that devolves in men, Mm -hmm. because it's the one that I think of when I think of, like, really striking visual imagery. It's funny, I... I wish I would have seen Hatching because I've seen the trailer for Hatching and the creature mm-hmm. effects in that look phenomenal, but I haven't seen it, so I can't really speak for the rest of it. So I'm actually I'm actually saying the Cenobites from Hellraiser should win because I really love the change they made with switching the leather gear to just like their skin is their costumes. Okay, yeah, full agreement. Uh, I love the kind of range of different sort of creatures that we got from this. Initially, mm-hmm. we thought we were going to have to drop this and then we got a bunch of write-ins and it ended up filling out the category. But Trace, who do you think will win? I truly don't know who's going to win this, but I actually stuck with my pick (laughs) and I picked the Cenobites and Hellraiser. Wow. Okay. I felt like we were overdue for some nope love. So I thought that the striking image of Jean Jacket would take this category. See, it's interesting. The only reason I didn't pick that or even the birthing thing in Mem is because they were very CGI based. Oh, interesting. So you thought people would reward practical effects. I did. I did. But maybe I'm wrong. So let's see. (laughs) So you are correct. It is the Cenobites who take it with 28.5. And I am second. So Jean Jacket did come in second with 21. And then Mother from Barbarian at 17.6. Oh, now we're tied. You might lose. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I did lose last year, and Trace was not gracious about winning. I never am gracious about winning. That's why my husband won't play games with me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, next up. Okay, now we're entering spoiler territory. So if for some reason, everyone, you have an aversion to spoilers, um, stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we'll we'll put a list of the different films that we're potentially venturing into spoiler territory in the show notes. So if you want to make sure, double check there, because we, we do have some films that are a little bit off the beaten path from here on out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but let's start with Best Villain Trace. I love okay. this category. This is always a favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. So we have Doshik from You're My 
favorite film of the year, Midnight. Yes. We have Steve from Fresh, The Grabber from The Black Phone, Art the Clown from Terrifier 2, Esther and Trisha from Orphan First Kill, <laughs> The Priest from Hellraiser, Pearl from both Pearl and X, Mother from Barbarian, Ghostface from Scream, and The Men from Men. Um, okay. Well, uh, I, mm -hmm. as much as I love Midnight and I love that Doshi character, I, yes, man, I, I'm picking Art the Clown for both should and will win in Terrifier 2. Oh, okay. So I agree with you with should win, but it was a tie because I do think that Doshik is such a mm -hmm. great villain. And if nothing else, I think Doshik and Art are on the same kind of villain wavelength where they're killing people, but they're having fun doing it. Yeah. And that makes them so memorable to me. Yes. And again, everyone, if you haven't seen Midnight, go check it out. Midnight's great. Jesus <laughs> Christ. How many times do we have to tell you to go and see it? We have a whole yeah. Patreon episode on it. Go, go, go. Yes. <laughs> I don't think that those characters are going to win though i think it's going to be mother from barbarian because it seemed like it was such a big deal like barbarian was such a big film i yeah. think that people want to reward that villain you know what you might be, I, I was surprised that she got third place in uh in the uh the creature effects so um yeah well, take us away joe mm. who is the winner of best villain of 2022 So I'm super fucking wrong, and Mother didn't even make the top four trades. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. It is Art yes. the Clown with 28.4, followed by Pearl. Our folks love some Mia Ga. She came Loves in second with 21.3, followed by Esther and Trisha with 11.2. Man, I am at least I'm at least happy to see Orphan First Kill getting some recognition because everyone that is a movie that mm -hmm. no one thought was going to be worth watching. And it wound up being one of the most fun surprises of the year. Honestly, and and that's one of the joys of looking at lists at the beginning of the year and saying, what films are we excited for? And there's a movie that you don't even know exists or will be good <laughs> coming down that pipeline, baby. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. Well, that puts you at three and me at four, Joe. Okay, well, let's see if I can even it up in this next category. Oh, man. Okay, um, so we are at best sequence, and again, really oh, competitive category. So, mm -hmm. first up, we have Alice's, Rachel Sennett, uh, her rant in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. We have the Bus Massacre in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think this is maybe the only award this is nominated for, which, you know. <laughs> Correct, yes. <sad. laughs> Leatherface didn't even make the best villain category. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, that sucks. Well, OK. Uh, the tape measure bit in Barbarian, the subway scene in The Sadness, the child death in Halloween Ends, the birthing sequence in Men, the hospital sequence in Scream, Pearl's monologue in Pearl, Esther's joyride maniac in Orphan First Kill, and Jupiter's claim sucked up in Nope. Um, all right, Joe, who should win this one? Yeah, so you're right that this one is like, oh my god, how do you even decide? I think that Jupiter's claim in Nope should win because it's just completely different from everything else that we saw this year. This is a tricky category if for no other reason than sequence can be funny or scary. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I picked Nope because I think it's a standout. I picked that as well, if only because I, I find that scene legitimately horrifying like i was oh, very God. uncomfortable watching that scene yes. in a movie theater um mm -hmm. if we were going for equal effect but like for com comedy it would absolutely be esther's joyride in orphan first kill okay i think for mine it probably would have been alice's ramp but i don't know if that's just because we podcast and i'm like why did you stab me in the fucking heart <laughs> <laughs> okay but who do you think will win this i think that this is an easy one to predict i'm pretty sure it's going to be pearl's monologue that's so we're, we're we're the same on this one. Yep, I think the exact same thing. And we are correct, but it's not by the margin that I thought. So Pearl's monologue comes in first at twenty three point nine, 
followed by the tape measure sequence from Barbarian at 16.8, and then our pick from Nope with 15.8. Man, I, people really went ape shit for that uh, that 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 um, tape measure scene. I I thought it was funny. I just you know shit. Maybe I'm more muted on that film than everyone else is. Well, it was a little tricky, right? Because Justin Long has a bunch of standout moments as that film's premier asshole. And folks, if you want to hear our thoughts on Barbarian, we do have a Patreon episode on it. We talk all about it. I feel like it was hard to distill a single moment from that movie, except for something like this, where it's just like, oh, that synthesizes everything about how much of a dick he is. Yeah, yeah, very, very much so. Very much so. Um, great scene. Great performance from justin long um, i will forever mm -hmm. be answering the phone with what up Efsler." uh no you would not <laughs> oh, only for you joe only for you <laughs> oh thank you thank you you know how much i love the Efsler. <laughs> oh it's your favorite you tell me about it all the time you dream about it all the time never on <laughs> mic never on a hot mic though <laughs> but uh all right joe take us into the next category all right so every good horror film has to end even some bad ones so we're going to talk about best endings and our nominees are Toxic Fandom from Scream, The Final Predator Battle from Prey, the very depressing rock quarry ending of Speak No Evil, Pearl's End Credit Smile in Pearl, the dessert that keeps giving in s'mores for the menu, the fact that David died accidentally in Bodies, 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 the fact that Emerald gets her picture in Nope, Maxine heading off to Hollywood at the very end of X, Rose setting herself on fire at the end of Smile, and the more melancholy but still optimistic ending of Hypochondriac where Zach Vela sits on the bench with his demons. I'm sorry. In this sheet, though, it's for Smile, it's Rose Burns, and I absolutely I love know. that pun. <laughs> Well, I try to keep the descriptions to a minimum because the, I don't want people to have to read endlessly to answer these nominees. But yeah, no, I, yeah, get I was that. like, oh, Ro Rose Burns. That's hilarious. <laughs> but not the Australian actress. <laughs> so I will say, um, I, I love, I love, in theory, the toxic fandom ending of Scream. And for the most part, I think it works really well. Um, but honestly, mm -hmm. I liked it more after seeing some of the toxic fandom's replies right. to the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they knew what they were doing. Unfortunately, though, um, my should and will win for this movie are Pearl Smile for Pearl, because I think that that woman has just um, really made her mark on, on horror fans this year. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's not my preferred win. I actually think that the s'mores ending of the menu is just, I mean, okay. I'm going to say it, Trace. It's chef's kiss perfect because that movie, it's just so savvy with its food culture critique. And I love the idea of turning people into human desserts. It's yeah, I love it. I love the imagery. Um, <laughs> but I agree with you. I think that Pearl's smile will take this category. All right. Are we right? We are correct. Yeah, she takes it with 24.5. I didn't think the second place entry was going to rank so highly, but uh, it's David died accidentally from Bodies, Bodies, Bodies with 19.1. Oh, that actually makes me really happy. Yeah, it's I mean, I I didn't think Bodies, Bodies, Bodies was going to rep too, too hard given some of the competition. But I'm mm -hmm. pleased to see that the people who like it voted for it. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, and the final one, the final one was the Predator Battle with 11.5. Ooh, you know what? That's fair. That's a really, that whole, <laughs> that whole movie's just, just an adrenaline rush. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so now we're moving into Best Death, which again, it's like, it's splitting hairs, right? Because we've done Best Sequence, but how do you not put a death in a sequence? But here we go. Best Death. Okay. Stab Frenzy for Richie in Scream. The Child Fall in Halloween Kills. Oh, the Alligator Pond for Bobby Lynn in X. Oh, <laughs> I know Bobby Lynn. <laughs> Brittany Snow is so good in X. I, I, my biggest critique is that I wanted more of her in that movie. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Conveyor Crush in Jupiter's Claim for Nope. The Net Dissolve of the French Trapper in Prey. Allie in the Bedroom in Terrifier 2. 
The Skull Crush of Keith in Barbarian. Melody's Car Decapitation in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, look, there's another one for that. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah, there we go. Bruce's End Credits Bleed Out in A Wounded Fawn. And I will say before we give our picks, um, I was mixed on A Wounded Fawn. However, mm-hmm. the end credit scene of that movie gives Pearl a run for its money in best end credit scene of 2022. So I will just say that. Oh, really? Okay, that's the only one of this list that I haven't seen. And uh, I had to actually check with you because people wrote in for this one. And I was like, does it merit? I don't know. It and does. You, were, you told me that, just that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's real good. Add that, add yeah. that. <laughs> like, li- literally, like, if, <laughs> great way to make you sail away into the credits. Um, but the movie itself is fine. Um, okay. All right. So, Joe... I feel like you're going to have the same answer for both like I do, but who who should win mm-hmm. this? Oh, yeah. As we said off the top, everybody complains about how competitive these categories are. And I will say this is the second year in a row where Best Death is a runaway, like very easy to identify pick. Last year, it was the Bread Slicer in Fear Street. <laughs> and this year, it's Alley in the Bedroom for Terrifier 2. Nobody's topping that shit. It's should and will. I don't think it's any competition. That is a death that goes on for so long, cuts to another scene, and then cuts back <laughs> to finish mm-hmm. the death scene. And it is one of the bloodiest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, but Joe, um, surprise me. Did you, Who won? <laughs> we are correct with 26.9% of the vote. So actually not as high as I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Second place was Skull Crush of Keith in Barbarian with 158 really? And the final one was the Conveyor Crush in Jupiter's Claim for Nope at 12.3. Yeah, I think I would have that at number two. And I think I would have... Honestly, as many times as I've seen Scream 2022 by now, I think Richie's stabbing mm-hmm. like death is really, really, really cathartic. It is. And folks, if you want to listen to our Scream episode on Patreon, you will hear my theory that I think that's actually also going to be a very important death for what happens to Melissa Barrero's character in the new film. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. All right. Next category. Yeah, and I don't think we had this category last year. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we added this because we wanted to acknowledge just the proliferation of how much queer horror we get to talk about nowadays. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Trace, uh, our list of nominees include Hypochondriac, Sissy, Bodies, 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 Bones and All, We're All Going to the World's Fair, Chucky Season 2, Yellow Jacket Season 1, Hellraiser, interview with the vampire and exploited and i would like to note for folks who are listening we literally have episodes on every single one of those except interview with the vampire holy shit we really do Mm -hmm. oh wow because we cover queer horror it's this funny thing i I guess we probably should because we we're called horror queers that's like a a, a thing we should do um (laughs) wait oh my god is that what our name means Ah, uh, um, God, I, I really like I haven't cheated, but I really think that all the ones I think should win are going to win. Um, I have okay. Chucky for both should and will win on this. Okay. And t- to be clear, I am judging this not necessarily on a on a overall quality scale, but more so mm-hmm. on a queer factor scale. Oh, OK. I, I like that criteria because, yeah, folks, the reason we do a should and will is because we've gotten reasonably good at sort of predicting that. Oftentimes, the biggest property is the one that will do well in the actual final results. But we Mm -hmm. wanted to give opportunities to highlight if we felt differently or things that, you know, we appreciate that maybe aren't going to get the recognition. But yeah, sometimes it's like, well, one title just does it well in both ways. Well, And so it's like, 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 I love Chucky season two, but do I think that Yellow Jacket season one was a better season of television? Yes. However, Mm -hmm. for queer representation, just overall queerness, I think that Chucky season two takes the cake with this one. Okay, so I agree with you in the will win. I'm going to give a shout out to we're all going to the World's Fair. I feel Mm -hmm. like there's been a very passionate conversation about that film. I also want to recognize that it's the only film that we covered that we really saw a lot of traction for from a trans director. So yeah, I want to see more of this. I think this was a representation that a lot of people saw themselves in. And for that, I actually think it's a really important film. 
But I do I think popularity-wise, it's Chucky season two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so who is the winner, Joe? So we are both correct. It is Chucky season two with 22.3% of the vote, followed okay. by Bodies, 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 185 and then Yellow Jacket season one with 143 I'm not going to lie. I'm a little surprised by all the bodies, bodies, bodies representation here. I, I'm happy for it, right? but I'm a little surprised by it. Yeah, no. I, I mean, bodies, bodies, bodies represent. Mm hmm. All right. Now we're getting into more obscure territory. And by obscure, I mean if you don't watch foreign films. So <laughs> <laughs> the nominations are for best non English horror film Midnight from South Korea, The Innocence from Norway, The Sadness from Taiwan, Piggy from Spain, Speak No Evil from the Netherlands and Denmark, Incantation from Taiwan, Hatching from Finland, The Long Walk from Laos, Saloum from Senegal and France, and You Won't Be Alone from Australia, the UK, and Serbia. Joe, I mm -hmm. confess, this is the one I have seen the least entries in, only having seen one, two, three. I've seen three of these films. So, Wow, you are uncivilized you're a cretin sir i know i know <laughs> so my should win is midnight because of course that is my top horror film of 2022 um right. who do you think should win this uh yeah this was one of those ones where i think i've i've seen like seven of the ten i haven't seen hatching incantation or the long walk i really like all the rest of them um so i ended up with a three-way tie <laughs> Oh, God. Um, the Innocence, which is my favorite film of the year, but Midnight is like basically my yeah. other favorite film of the year. And then I wanted to give a shout out to You Won't Be Alone, which is honestly one of the most gorgeously emotional films that I saw last year that no one is talking about. Um, I, I, I will throw in a, 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 a whatever for The Long Walk. I haven't seen it, but um, it's a Maddie Doe film and Maddie Doe is a fantastic mm -hmm. best regular and she's a wonderful person, but I have not met a single person who watched that film that didn't like it. I have only heard good things about this film. So while I have not seen right. it and so I can't offer my personal recommendation, I would say seek out The Long Walk. Yeah. I mean, honestly, seek out more horror films that are either foreign or that they're not in English because these films are gems. And if that's your barrier, it's a good one to try to break through because a lot of these films are just doing something completely different than what we're getting in North America. Yeah. So, Joe, who is your vote? Who, who do you think will win this? Okay. So, I kind of defaulted to which ones I thought people would have actually seen because some of these mm -hmm. are pretty deep cuts. So, I was torn between either the sadness or speak no evil. I felt like I saw more chatter on speak no evil, even though it's not my preference. That's what I went with. Interesting. So, yeah, I am. Um... <sighs> My official vote for Will Win is The Innocence because I feel like, at least in critic circles, that's the one that I saw most people talk about. Mm. It's not my official vote, but my backup is I would not be surprised to speak no evil wins this because, yeah, I think that the shutter label, like, I think that may yes. that, that allowed mm -hmm. more people to see it. But my official vote's for The Innocence, and you're going with Speak No Evil. Mm -hmm. Are either one of us right? I am correct with 18.9%, yeah, followed by the sadness with 175 and then the innocence with 117 So once again, I must tell everyone, go watch Midnight. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's my spiel. That's <laughs> <Moving your on>. spiel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to move into direction now. So we're talking about best feature directorial debut. We deliberately break this in two in part because it gives us an opportunity to recognize more female identifying directors because lo and behold, Trace, as we discovered doing this over four <laughs> years, a lot of first time female features and then we just don't see follow ups from them. But we sure do see a lot of men who get them. So we sure do. So we want to keep this around. But also it's just it's really exciting to recognize someone for the first time like oh my god who are you i'm not going to follow your career religiously so let's talk about these 10 people we have mimi cave for fresh chloe akuno for watcher addison hyman for hypochondriac jane schoenbrom for we're all going to the world's fair rob jabba's for the sadness 
Parker Finn for Smile, Maria Diallo for Master, Nick Yatsu Jusu for Nanny, Kwano Sung for Midnight, and Nyla Anuksuk for Slashback. Mm-hmm. Trace, okay. what do you think? I think Chloe Okuno should win this for Watcher because, I mean, it's no secret mm. that I love Watcher, but I think that she yes. took a... It, it's, I'm not gonna, it's not a pedestrian script, but it's a pretty mm-hmm. predictable narrative. And I think that she turns what could have been a very predictable and dull film into just a masterclass of filmmaking. I think she directs the fuck out of this movie and should absolutely mm-hmm. win this award. Okay. So I went with uh, Kwan Osung for Midnight because I could not believe how well shot this film is for a first time feature like yeah maybe i'm conflating direction and editing because this movie is hyper propulsive but i just think it's yeah it just really captured me in terms of the way we're going through this one night chase sequence in a single yeah. film i don't disagree with you at all but then yeah who 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 do you think will because I, I i'm honestly not sure who's going to win this award <laughs> Okay, so I defaulted again to the one that I felt most people would recognize. Smile is one of the biggest films of the year. So I went with Parker Finn for Smile. So I feel like you're right, but I am also going to go with my gut and hope that people appreciated Mm -hmm. Chloe Okuno's work in Watcher. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, God damn it, people proved me wrong. (laughs) I know, I know people just keep proving me wrong. But yeah, I I think you're going to be right, though. Um, who, Who is the winner in this case? So I am correct. It is Parker Fuck. Finn with 28.1, but you came in second. Uh, so Chloe Akuno comes in second with 22.4, followed by Mimi K for Fresh with 16.2. <sighs> okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> you, you seem fine. You seem not at all mad. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Here's the thing. Okay. We already know we're getting more Akuno and just bring on this renaissance. Like, She's going to be doing lots of work in the future. It's fine. Maybe she'll win at Fangoria's Chainsaw Awards. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So next up, we have Best Director. Another tight race. So for our nominees for this, we have Radio Silence for Scream. Dan Trachtenberg for Prey. Zach Kreger for Barbarian. Rebecca McKendry for Glorious. Jordan Peele for Nope. Ty West for X and Pearl, Damien Leone for Terrifier 2, David Bruckner for Hellraiser, Eskil Vogt for The Innocence, and Helena Rain for Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Um, God, fuck. Joe, who, who, right? <laughs> who do you think should win this? <laughs> so my vote was Eskil Voigt for The Innocence, because that is my top film of the year. I think that this film is flawless in every single way, and that includes direction. Yeah. Um, only one of list I haven't seen. So, um, one, one day I will get to the innocence to watch these killer kids. Um, <laughs> I, I'm picking Damien Leone for Terrifier 2 for should win. O- if only because, okay. A, I, I do think that if you watch the first film and the second film, like the, the increase in like skill <laughs> is very right. apparent between those mm-hmm. two films. And I also really appreciate how he held his ground and was like, no, I'm not cutting this two hour and 18 minute slasher movie down to any any shorter because it's the film I want to make. So right. I appreciate you, sir. <laughs> there we go. I mean, yeah, a lot of people consider the director to be the person who steers the ship. It's the person who's doing the entire creative vision. And in that regard, Terrifier 2 is a singular achievement, right? Yes, but I don't think he's going to win this. And th- this was really tough to think who was mm-hmm. going to win. I'm actually going to pick the one-two punch of X and Pearl. So I think Ty West is going to win this. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that was my tipping point. I was divided between two. I went with my gut. I figured people love Jordan Peele. They're going to reward no. Nope. Yeah. And... I was wrong. It is Ty West, maybe because <gasps> he had two films. <laughs> yeah, this We're one tied. is a bit of a stronger win. So he pulls away with 36.3. Jordan Peele is second for 25.8% of the vote, followed by Zach Kreger for Barbarian 13.2. Mm-hmm. Well, we are both tied, Joe. We are nine and nine. 
Ooh, well, let's go into a obscure category to see if we can get a yeah. tiebreaker, shall we? Mm -hmm. So, folks, now we're going to talk about best under the radar film, a.k.a. films that we feel deserve some more attention. So particularly if you're hearing this list and you don't recognize a lot of the titles, we really encourage you to go and check them out. Yes. OK, so our nominees are The Harbinger, No Exit, Midnight, The Innocents, Glorious, Significant Other, Two Witches, Slashback, We're All Going to the World's Fair, and Hypochondriac. And Trace, oh, man. who do you think should win? Midnight is my should win. Uh, okay. However, I've seen all but one, two, two films. So I have not seen The Innocents and I have not seen Two Witches. Um, Okay. I don't dislike any single film on this list. I think all of these are worth watching. Uh, yep. I do want to like give a special shout out to Significant Other because I feel like that film kind of hit and like just didn't really make many waves. Everyone, Significant Other is from the people that made Villains, starring Michael Monroe, mm -hmm. starring Jake Lacey. Yep. It is really fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> just please go watch it. But don't, don't watch the trailer. Don't read no. anything about it. Just go watch Significant Other. It is really really good and slashback i think is a is a really good example of gateway horror it's like the thing mm -hmm. for kids yeah with some really unsettling imagery from that monster because it's a contortionist so think of the kind of flexibility and movement that we got in something like malignant only transpose that into an indigenous community and put it up against kids yes yes but what, what is your should win for this uh, so I picked the, the two favorite films of the year for me. So I went with The Innocents and Midnight, but I don't think those are going to win. Clearly, they have not been performing well in yeah. some of the other categories. This one's really hard because I don't know, I know how many of these people saw. I figure Glorious might have the edge because it is a Shutter release as well. And I think it's an exceptionally well done film considering this is very clearly a COVID production with like one actor and then a voice performance. 100%. I think this really shows off Rebecca McKendry's directorial talents as well, because mm -hmm. it's just, I was very surprised by this film, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I don't think it's going to win. I actually, I trusted our listener base for this. I actually think Hypercontract is okay. going to win this one. Oh, fun. But, Interesting. But I will say, I do want to highlight also The Harbinger, because I think that The Harbinger... Yes for being a covid release and covid set horror film um mm -hmm. i think it is the film that has nailed that that aspect yes. the best out of any covid film that was shot and released last year <laughs> okay yeah i was really disappointed when i posted my very positive review of that film out of fantasia and people just shut it down because they were like Ugh, covid horror and i you know what i get that we're all sick of a pandemic because it's not the most fun thing to right. live through that film is really surprisingly emotional. Like, yeah. if if the COVID part is turning you off, go in for the relationship between these people and what it means to, like, lose people during a pandemic. Like, Annie Mitten has made a really great film, and people should check it out. It's very sincere. It's very genuine. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, 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 it I don't think it brought me to tears, but I, I was definitely deeply affected by this film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... The actual winner is... We're all going to the World's Fair with 25.8%, oh. which I'm you know, so happy about. I'm really happy about that. I, 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 did, I would never have picked that as the winner because I didn't think that, it, no. that people saw it, but good. Good, good for that I movie. Know. Shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'll co-sign with you that all of these films are great. And like, I've seen Two Witches as well. I saw that out of Salem Horror Fest. That one's mm -hmm. like a little dark gem. If you're looking for something, a weird fucked up Ooh. thing, that's a good pick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, now we move down to, I think, our second last category, Trace. So yeah, we are going to best independent release, which are going to be smaller films that are released by independent studios or streamers. Okay, that's how we're distinguishing this between mainstream films. Mm -hmm. So first up, we have The Sadness, Watcher, Sissy, Hellbender, Something in the Dirt, Soft and Quiet, Resurrection, Terrifier 2, Deadstream, and Fresh. 
And uh, hmm. Joe, I, I'm curious. Yeah, what is your pick for should win on this one? So my should and will is the same. I pick Terrifier 2. Okay, so I would. So that that, that is my will win. I think Terrifier 2 will win. Um, my mm-hmm. should win is actually Soft and Quiet. And oh my god. This, this is a movie. This is a movie. Um, <laughs> it's it's that thing. It's under the genre umbrella. Like it's not really a horror movie in the traditional sense. But everyone, what what soft and quiet is is a hate crime captured in real time in a single take for about ninety minutes. And it is one of the most challenging and upsetting films I've ever seen. Um, I loved it, and I never want to see it again. But I've also mm-hmm. talked to many people who saw and fucking hated it uh and it, it will be one or the other i don't think there's a middle ground in this movie but i to me that that is the most impressive and deserving of this of this award however i do think terrifier 2 will win and i don't i will not be upset if it does right yeah um i haven't seen soft and quiet still and i'll just echo the fact that yeah it's a bit of a content warning i've seen really really strong negative reactions from yeah. listeners and friends of color so i think just protect yep. yourself unless you yeah just protect yourself <laughs> i mean yeah it, it, it is a horror film in the truest realist sense of the world like it is the exact opposite of the quote-unquote fun you would get out of terrifier too <laughs> yeah i mean i guess again having not seen it I'm just wondering what it would feel like if you and I had to watch a hate crime unfold for 90 minutes and be like, oh, is this telling you something new that you didn't realize was happening in the world? I mean, I I won't speak anything more for him, but like my husband, who is a person of color, loathed soft and quiet. Like it was a very much a reaction of like, why would anyone make this movie? What purpose does this have to exist? So I get it. I just I I really again, I quote unquote liked it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very effective at what it's setting out to do. We'll put it that way. Yeah, very okay. much. But Joe, what is our winner for Best Independent Release? Well, it's not the film we just spent three minutes talking about. It is Terrifier 2. <laughs> with Yay! 26.7. So we each get a point. <laughs> So Watcher takes second place with 18.5 and then Fresh mm. at 14.6. Wait, and what was Terrifier's percentage? Uh, Only 26.7. So it wasn't like a runaway huh. win or anything. So I feel like we had more runaway wins last year. So the only, the only real runaway win we've had this year was, was Mia Goth. Mia Goth, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shit, all right. Well, hey, you know what? Everyone has different tastes, and I'm really happy about that. We're really seeing that in the spread this year. Yeah. Yeah, because even this year, you know, we had uh, the most nominations were for Nope and Scream. And, you know, those films haven't been doing as well. But I think it's just because people are feeling passionate about some of these other smaller films. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. But uh, Joe, take us home with the final category. Well, and maybe we'll see a win for one of those two films here because we're talking about best mainstream release. So these are mass marketed films released by major studios or streamers. And folks, here are your nominees. We have Scream, X slash Pearl, Bodies, 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 Prey, Barbarian, Orphan First Kill, Violent Night, Smile, Nope, and The Menu. Trace, what do you think should win? Okay, so it may not be the best movie of the bunch, but I'm just going to say that Orphan First Kill should win this because (laughs) I... It's an expectations game. I mean, I already said it before, but like, I just, I had no expectations for this movie and I Mm -hmm. had so much fun with it. Right. And I appreciated its self-aware humor. It's leaning into camp. Like you're taking the exact same premise of the first movie and being funny about it in a way that Mm -hmm. I only the first one was. And this, I mean, and 11 years later, sequel, I mean, this movie should not have worked. And Mm -hmm. it did. And I loved it so much. So this is my should win for the year. But I do think that the will win, if only because you put two movies on one ballot, it's Mm -hmm. X and Pearl are going to win this. (laughs) Okay. well, I agree with you for the should win because of that list, I definitely had the most fun with Worf and First Kill. And it was the biggest surprise of the year. Like genuinely did not think that that movie was going to be good. Bar less, really, really fucking good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Now, I think people are going to go with a different pick. I think that there is a lot of goodwill 
for Jordan Peele and Nope. You know, he tried something a little bit different. He brought in these Mm -hmm. actors that everybody knows and loves. Very well executed. Some of the most unsettling imagery of the year. So I picked Nope for Will Win. Oh, see, I think we're... What if we both get an upset? It's going to be Barbarian. Or Smile. Yeah. So the winner is Barbarian with 24%. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, folks. I don't know what to I'm do. a little disappointed with this win. Oh, Joe. <laughs> no, it's I recognize that it's an extremely popular choice. So that definitely makes sense. As you said, it could have been this. It could have been Smile. Huge runaway successes. I don't have the same love for these titles. We've got, again, Patreon episodes on both of those if you want to hear why. But um, mm. I think this is a very like, it's reflective of when you open up the ballots to a large population of people. This movie was a sensation, so a lot of people voted for it. I'm not going to say I'm disappointed, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I am a little surprised. I really did think X and Pearl were like truly going to take this home because I know a lot, but maybe it's just our inner circle of horror friends. Like, yeah, maybe it's like the the mass populace just really, really latched onto Barbarian. And you know, there's a lot of fun twists and surprises in that movie. So that, that, that mm-hmm. you know what. Or good on you, Barbarian. Has the same thing, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, good for you, Barbarian. <laughs> well, in case you were wondering, X and Pearl did come in second, 23.5. So Barbarian edged out the win with 0.5%. Mother followed by nope. cock. <laughs> <laughs> followed by nope <laughs> with uh, 207 So this was actually pretty tight. I think people had a difficult time picking a favorite mainstream horror film. Again, an embarrassment of riches from last year. Yeah, we'll never complain about that. And Joe, I, I truly don't know what to do because we are tied for this. We each Ooh. have 10 points and I don't accept ties, but I guess I have to for this. And that m- makes me very angry. <laughs> uh, how about this? Let's circle back in one year. But Trace, oh, shit. what do you think will be people's favorite mainstream film in 2023's Hereditaries? Ooh. Um, we just talked about which films we're most excited for on YouTube if folks want to go and hear our picks. So I'm guessing it's one of those two. Based on the films that I know are coming out this year, I'm mm-hmm. going to take a gamble and say Evil Dead Rise will be the film of 2023. Damn it, that would have been my pick too. Uh tell you uh, what, you can- I will go <laughs> I will go with Scream. So I will go with Scream 6. You will have Evil Dead Rises, and we will see. Who takes the cake next year? I mean, you can pick it too, and we'll just tie again. It's fine. Like, we, we talked about this a million times before. Like, uh, 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 we, we are getting like we're becoming way more aligned in our taste and our, and our, our finger on the pulse of, of the mass horror culture. <laughs> I was going to say you and I are just becoming more similar. Like we're basically the men creature where we're just like coming. Yeah, that's out a better way of saying what I just said. <laughs> terrible. terrible. Nevertheless, terrible. everyone. 2022 was a fantastic year for horror. Good job on all this voting. I mean, again, like really deserving winners here. And shit, I mean, I'm excited for to see what 2023 has in store for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it's anywhere near as good as this, we're going to have another fun round of voting next December. Well, as I said at the beginning of the episode, follow us on social media. But until the 2023 hereditaries, we can cross out the 2022 hereditaries. Yes, but not us. We'll we'll be back like next week and so on. But uh, yeah, 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 now yeah, yeah. Please stick around. <laughs> we'll cross out <laughs> horror queers. Tony Colette. Gee, thank you so much. This is a real pleasure. Atlas Avenue, a long stretch of road that encompasses everything the city of Kennet Heights has to offer. Neon lights, traffic, crime, the hustle and bustle of everyday life, and the craziest of characters. My office was above it all. My name is James Locke, and I'm a P.I. Hello, Mr. J. How the hell you doing today? Good, Edith. Nearly every year I have a new case. New people to meet, new clues to discover, and new problems to solve. But I do it the old-fashioned way. No technology. Nothing post-1950. 
Hell, I don't even listen to podcasts, but you should. Atlas Avenue Beat is a spoof of the film noir genre with goofy characters, tons of wordplay, and nonstop raunchy humor. There's also three whole seasons out right now with more on the way. Just search for Atlas Avenue Beat wherever you listen to podcasts or visit us online at bloody.fm.